Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a ratio based on a given equation. So we have a squared minus 2b squared equals ab, and we're going to evaluate a plus b divided by a minus b. We're going to find a numerical value. And I'll be presenting at least two methods, and let's see how that goes. And let's start with the first one. So I have a squared minus 2b squared equals ab. So I want to go ahead and put everything on the same side. a squared minus ab minus 2b squared equals 0. Obviously, I want to put the negative 2b squared at the end so that we have the ab in the middle. So this is a quadratic equation. There, Even though there are two variables, it is quadratic. And one thing I can do is try to factor it, right? How do we factor these kinds of things? There's a couple of different ways. One of them is called the x method. For example, when you have something like this, let's just make up an equation like 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. You can go ahead and multiply these two numbers. That gives you a negative 15. And then the sum is 2. That's a, the top number is a product, and this is a sum. And then we look for two numbers whose product is negative 15 and whose sum is 2. And those numbers are going to be 5 and negative 3. They kind of tell you how to break down the 2, so we kind of break it down like 3x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 5. And then this is factorable. Take out x, 3x plus 5. Take out negative 1, 3x plus 5, so on and so forth. So this makes it factorable, right? This is called the x method. But here's what we're going to do. There's an easier way to do it. Obviously, you can do it with the x method, but the problem is there are two variables. It still works by the way. But here's what I can do. I notice that if I break down the negative 2b squared into minus b squared minus b squared, then this expression should be factorable by grouping, but not the first two terms. We're going to go ahead and kind of put these two together, and since there's two of them, it doesn't matter which one, and these two together, okay? Uh-oh. The other two are going to be these two. So a squared minus b squared minus ab minus b squared. And then we're going to set it equal to 0. These two can be factored into a plus b, a minus b from difference of two squares. And if I take out a minus b here, I get a plus b. So a plus b is a common factor. Let's go ahead and take it out. a plus b. And then times, this is a minus b minus b. And which gives us a minus 2b, or not 2b, right? Well, it just happens to be that way. And set it equal to 0. Great. Always remember what we're trying to find because that will help you kind of keep it in perspective. We're trying to evaluate the ratio a plus b to a minus b, right? So that kind of implies that it will be good to know what a over b on b over a is, right? And we can find it from here, actually. For example, this equation gives us two solutions, right? But since there are two variables, that kind of gives one of the solutions in terms of the other. Like, for example, a plus b equals 0 from here implies a is equal to negative b. And the second equation, a minus 2b equals 0 implies a is equal to 2b. So we were able to write a in terms of b. And then now we can go ahead and use these here because this is the ratio we're trying to evaluate. One value would be if you replace a with negative b, negative b plus b divided by negative b minus b, which is 0 over negative 2b, and that's 0. Obviously, in this case, you don't want b to be 0. And let me tell you something. If b is 0 in the original problem, a is also going to be 0. So we can't really talk about this ratio anymore, right? So they should be different from 0. Great. The second solution, a minus uh, 2b equals 0 gave us a equals 2b. So we can go ahead and replace a with 2b. And that's going to give us 3b over b, which is 3. So there are two solutions, 0 and 3, for a plus b over a minus b. Again, these are not the a over b values. These are, th these are the answers. Make sense? There are two possible answers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And hopefully... We'll be able to compare. I could even talk about another approach that's kind of branch off, but if we have time and if I still remember it, we'll talk about it, okay? So, second method. 
So for our second method, now what was the problem? a squared minus 2b squared equals ab. And I'm trying to evaluate a plus b over a minus b, but again, this kind of depends on finding a over b or b over a. Let's just focus on a over b, okay? And let me tell you why that is important. If you go ahead and divide everything by b here, you get a over b plus 1 divided by a over b minus 1. So if I know a over b, then I can find this very easily. But how do you find a over b from here? Easy. You change the variables. How? Set a over b equal to something. How about setting a over b equal to u, right? And from here we get a equals bu, right? And then replace a with bu everywhere. This gives us bu squared minus 2b squared equals bu times b. Let's go ahead and simplify this. b squared u squared minus 2b squared equals b squared u. And then if you divide both sides by b squared, again, b does not equal 0. We have to, you know, satisfy that. And if you divide, you're going to get this. And we can now go ahead and cancel out the b squared. And this gives us u squared minus u minus 2 equals 0. Now you got to remember, u is a over b, and that's what I'm trying to find. And then I'm going to go ahead and use it here. Make sense? Okay. This is an easy quadratic. And we can just solve it. u minus 2, u plus 1 equals 0. And u is equal to 2 or u is equal to negative 1. But u is b over a, remember? Right? So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to b over a. And I think it was a over b, wasn't it? Yeah, a over b, not b over a. I'm used to use, uh, using b over a most of the time, but this time anyways. So from here we get a equals 2b. And from here, we get a equals negative b. And these are actually the exact same values that we found before in a different way. Of course, now if you go ahead and plug these in, because remember this was written as a over b plus 1 over a over b minus 1. By the way, you don't even need to find a in terms of b because you could directly use the u values in this equation. For example, if a over b is 2, it's going to be 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1, and that's going to be a 3. If a over b is negative 1, right, that's going to be a negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 minus 1, which is 0 over negative 2. That's equal to 0. Again, we find the same answers for this problem. Now, an alternative method, which is kind of, kind of, kind of branch off, is the following. You can go ahead and put a, b on the left-hand side as before. And then divide both sides by b squared. And actually dividing by b squared is very helpful because this gives us a squared over b squared. b cancels out. a over b minus 2 equals 0. And then by solving for a over b, this is quadratic, set it equal to something, you'll get the exact same answers. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.